In today's video, we will be repotting an intergeneric hybrid orchid by the name of Zygonesia. Stay tuned, let's see what this repotting adventure has in store for us. Hello everyone, welcome to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana, and yes, this will be a repotting video. And it might have a few twists and turns because it might not be the typical orchid repotting video. Now, as I mentioned in the brief introduction, this one is an intergeneric hybrid by the name of Zygonesia. It's a cross between a Zygopetalum and an Agonesia orchid, and this one has been named Snowbird. Now, this particular orchid was added to my collection about oh five or six months ago. It was in spike at the time and bloomed two beautiful spikes for me. And you know, since that time I have been learning how to care for it. I have been wanting to repot it, um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a, in a bit. But I just decided that now might be the right time, although I'm going a little bit against what's typically recommended. Okay, so let me explain a bit more about this whole situation. So after the spikes bloomed out, I cut them back. So this probably would have been, oh, I would say maybe like in about July or so. And the growth typically follows the spikes on this particular orchid. So the spikes come first and then the growth matures. Well, this particular growth didn't really mature all that well. You can see that it has two much shorter leaves right here. But then within the last, oh, maybe two months or so, it did start to grow this much, much healthier, larger pseudobulb. However, this particular growth did not bloom first. It just went ahead and matured um, the pseudobulb with the leaves, and I don't think there are going to be any blooms involved on this new growth. Now, the I guess the, the recommendation that you'll read about on the web is that these orchids, first of all, you know, if they're zygopetalums, they can be a little sensitive to repotting, and it's best to do it right after you cut the blooms off. However, I didn't do that, and so now this new growth has some new roots coming right here at the top of the pot. And so I've decided that I might want to take this out of the media that I purchased it in because I really don't know how old it was. It's probably been in this pot quite a while. And so I've decided to go ahead and repot it now. Now this is, you know, just sort of my intuition speaking to me. I don't know if this will work. Um, if you read about orchids that um, have zygopetalum in their parentage, you know, you can read about how sensitive they are, how picky they are, and sometimes it may be trial and error with multiple plants and sort of failing with what you choose to do before you get it right. And so this is the first orchid like this in my collection. It's a complete, you know, learning process experience for me. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see if it takes to repotting or if it struggles or, you know, yeah, it just may not make it. But, you know, I'm willing to experiment for uh, the learning process here in my particular environment. Now, you know, the other thing that I would say is that if you um, have been dealing with these orchids for years and you're successful in them, please don't change what you're doing because you've found uh, the right recipe for your growing environment. So stick with what works, and um, I will definitely report back on how this orchid does after it's repotted. Um, those of you that have followed my channel know that I share both my successes and my failures with growing orchids. Okay, so um, because this orchid is a little bit sensitive to repotting, I have um, made certain to water it really well up front, so it was watered about an hour ago. When I unpot it, I'm simply going to let 
the media fall away and I'm not going to really pick through the root system. I don't want to disturb it any more than is necessary. So if some of the old media hangs on, I'm just going to let it, you know, be that way. And um, I have been having a little bit of difficulty keeping this one, um, I guess you could say, moist enough. Now, a funny thing about this orchid, I think it likes to be watered really well, but then I also think it likes to dry out before it's watered again. However, with my sort of checking in on my orchids, this one seems to be a bit out of sync. So it seems like the rest of my orchids need to be watered a bit later, meaning like two or three more days without having water, and yet this one is maybe left thirsty just a little bit too long by, you know, two or three days. So um, I want to get it in some media that maybe is just the tiniest bit less coarse you can tell that what it's potted in right now is coarse bark pieces and sponge rock, as best I can tell. Now, when I get it out of the pot, I may find something else at the bottom, but you know, this is what I can see on the top of the pot. So I'm going to be making my own mix of something that's uh, a tiny bit less coarse so that it can retain the water just a little bit better and maybe be a bit better in sync with how I'm watering the other orchids you know, that, that are with it. Uh, and, you know, after I repot it, I'm hoping that the next new growth will produce uh, bloom spikes for me. And um, I think I might consider it's been growing under the grow lights. And while it has great vegetative growth, it may not have quite enough warmth in the house that way. So I am considering maybe moving it to the bay window, which is just the tiniest bit warmer. Okay, so that's a bit of background, that's a bit of a plan for how we're going to repot this orchid. And, you know, I pulled a couple of pots ahead of time, and clearly, you know, this round one is not really going to gain us anything because it's round, but it's really no bigger than the rectangular pot that the orchid is already in, so we're not gaining anything there. Um, I did a little research ahead of time, and it said that these orchids like wider but shallow pots. So I think the one um, that I have here will fit the bill. It's just a tiniest, you know, bit larger, but will give that new root system uh, an opportunity to have a bit more space to grow. And will hopefully allow this orchid to stay potted this way for two or three years before I have to address it again, you know, if it survives. Okay, so I am uh, going to break the camera for just a second so that I can prepare my area here to unpot this orchid and see how the old media falls away. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back with part two of the repotting video. The first thing that I think I would like to do here is go over how I have prepared the media for this orchid and you know, if you've watched a lot of my other repotting videos, uh, you'll know that I use pre-made mixes oftentimes. Uh, in this case, you know, there is no pre-made mix for uh, this particular orchid. So I'm just trying to make it similar to what the orchid was already growing in, yet maybe just the tiniest bit more water retentive. Okay, all right, so what I have here is I have some large orchid bark right here. So this is about one third. I have some sponge rock, but this would probably uh, be referred more as um, per uh, perlite because it's tinier pieces. It's not the large pieces compared to what the orchid is currently planted in. And so that's about one third. And then there's about one third of my Cattleya bark that is a pre-made mix. And then I just tossed in a few pieces of charcoal. So it's about a third, a third, and a third, and then just a little bit of charcoal. Now, if it turns out that this is not enough mix, then I'll just top the pot 
with some extra Cattleya uh, bark mix. Okay, so let's go ahead and mix this up. Um, I do have my cutters flamed and ready to go, but I'm really kind of thinking that I don't want to mess with the roots any more than is necessary, so I'm, I'm not anticipating doing a lot of trimming. Uh, I'm also not going to be spraying the root system with hydrogen peroxide, which is what I would typically do for orchids that I know can tolerate that. I'm not sure in this case. Um, and from what I can see on the surface, I'm not anticipating, you know, feeling the need to spray hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So this is what the mix looks like after I've stirred it up a bit. And uh, it's just slightly different from what the orchid is currently potted in, as best I can tell, because it does have some smaller bark chips and uh, the sponge rock is much smaller pieces. Okay, so let's see what's inside the pot. And then I'll make adjustments if needed. Now, while I'm doing this, um, I will put a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen if you would like to go back and watch the video from five or six months ago when I purchased this orchid in Spike in Bloom. It was just gorgeous. It is a fragrant orchid as well. Okay. So, the strategy here is to let this fall away. There are some interesting little pieces. Oh, you know, that might have been some type of slow release fertilizer inside the pot. There are like some tiny little round pieces that looks like fertilizer that may have already dissolved. And again, you know, um, perlite is not going to decompose, so there's no reason to try to make a big disturbance about getting out some pieces of rock because that will not cause the orchid any kind of problem if that stays behind. And in fact, I'm not even going to pick away at the bark or the rock that is inside the root system. I can tell that uh, there's no sphagnum moss here. Uh, the bark that is left behind is maybe, you know, a little bit decomposed, but not too bad. And for the sake of not disturbing the roots this time around, I'm just not going to fiddle with it too much. Okay, so let's leave that just like that. Okay, so another uh, break in the video just momentarily. Let me get rid of this um, old media that I will just be throwing away, and then we will do the repot. Okay, be right back. Okay, so the new pot and the new media are ready to go. We do need to sort of check and see the depth here and, you know, whether or not we need to put mix in the bottom, which, you know, we probably should do. Uh, yeah, and there's some space to do that. I don't really don't want the orchid to be potted higher or lower than it was previously. It would be good for it to just be similar. And that's going to be a little too high. Yes, I think that will be better. And you can see um, the new roots right here will still be very, very close to the top of the media once it's filled in. Okay, so before I cover up this gorgeous root system, um, I think the thing to notice is that the roots here are extremely healthy. Uh, there is some sign 
of new growth in a few other places. Okay. I'm just going to very gently work the smaller bark pieces down into that root system. And I'm working on this one side first because it was the place where the older bark fell away more easily on the older side of the plant. So I'm just kind of getting that in there to help hold the plant in place and then I'll come and work on this other side. I'm being extremely careful you know, not to um, interfere with those new root tips. And this may be the first time ever I have prepared almost the exact correct amount of media. Okay, so we're going to almost be finished here. We do need to check to make sure there's not um, any kind of large air gaps or anything. Pressing down just the tiniest bit to make sure that it's stable in the pot. It had a good root system, so that really helps with stability and, you know, there's no need for staking or anything like that. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, as you can see right here, I have a gigantic air gap where there is no media. That will not work. I'm going to have to fix that. So let's look around the rest of the pot here. All of that's looking pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so my strategy now is going to be to take this and give it a good watering. And I think that will you know, help some of the media settle. And then I will come back and we will talk about how to fill in this large air gap. Okay, I'm going to take this to the sink and then I'll be right back. Okay, so watering the orchid did help settle the bark down into some of the air gaps that were smaller, but we still have this large air gap right here to try to get a bit more media work down in there. One of my favorite tricks for this uh, that doesn't disturb the root system is to just use a small wooden bamboo skewer and you can kind of pull a little bit here and poke down uh, some extra media down into the air gap. Now I apologize if this um, goes off the camera because it's a little bit difficult for me to have it in front of the camera and for me to be able to see uh, what I'm doing as well. So you can just see that the skewer does help push the smaller pieces down into the air gap. And then all we have to do to compensate is add a little bit of extra media to the top.
And sometimes you can even pull the pieces of bark that are smaller to the edge and then kind of just work them down in there. Okay, and that is much, much better. So let me just add a little bit of extra now to the top so that those new roots are close to the media. All right, I think that's looking much, much better. Okay, so let's put the tag back, always important. And I hope you stayed until the very end of this video because I have a huge surprise on this particular orchid. And I noticed it when I was taking it out of the pot. And now I'm gonna try to show it to you on camera. I don't know if it's gonna pick up, but I'll do my best. Let's see. If I can find it again. Yes, right here. So, right here, I do believe that's the tiniest little sprout for a bloom spike. It just may happen after all. I'll be sure and let you know. So if you learned something new from this video or just enjoyed watching it, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button will be coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thanks for watching and talk to you next time.